How's it going all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at some trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics. So please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Now before I get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these trades. These trades are due out in the direct market on Wednesday, November 18th. So that's places like In Stock Trades, CheapGraphicNovels.com, uh, Tales of Wonder, and sometimes they're available earlier, depending on where you get your books. But your local comic book shop will have them on Wednesday. Now, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be talking about Hellions first. So here we have Hellions, Volume 1, collecting the first four issues of the new ongoing series. I do believe this is an ongoing series. We have Quanon here, who used to be Psylocke. I'm sure a lot of you all are familiar with that story, um, I hope. But she was last seen in the pages of X-Force and the pages of Fallen Angels. But now she has moved on over here to Hellions. We also have Alex Summers, who is Havoc. He's moved over here. We have some surprising new uh, characters that have shown up uh, in Krakoa. And if you've been reading X-Men for a long time, these characters are no stranger to you. Such as Empath, Wild Child, Nanny, Orphan Maker, and who used to be Scalp Hunter, but now goes by his name, Great Crow. And, of course, Havoc. And all of them are being judged in the circle of judgment by the council because of the evil deeds they have done in the past and pretty much they have been deemed dangerous to live on Krakoa so they have to atone for their sins including Havoc and I'm not going to talk about what he did but I find it interesting that he is mixed in with these people as a matter of fact it is explained why he is the way that he is a little bit and for all of you X-Men fans this book does a great job of explaining that because it touches upon some things that happened in the past especially during the outback years now let's keep going here because we got to be careful with spoilers so they set out on missions to try to redeem themselves by the way the artwork is by steven segovia who really reminds me a lot of lionel francis Yu, but i really dig his artwork so here's some of that artwork again Whenever you have Mr. Sinister, you know you're going to be dealing with clones. And when you're asking yourself, what the heck is Nanny doing with this bunch? Right, this is Nanny, who was kind of a joke character even during Chris Claremont's run or Louis Simonson's run on X-Factor. Uh, I really like the way that Seb Wells is setting her up as a pretty interesting, mysterious character. Who, I guess in a way, she always has been. But this was an unexpected title to me. This was a lot of fun and probably the reason why I'm talking about it first. Because I don't want anybody to miss out on this freaking awesome, unexpected story that I ended up liking so much. Uh, so all four issues are collected in here. This does lead into the X of Swords crossover. Let's look in the back for extras. So even in the back, I can't show every cover because it spoils some returning characters uh the book has 127 pages retails for 15.99 and like i said leads directly into the x of swords crossover and here are some variant covers here it's will spritasio right next to an old jim lee picture from the acts of vengeance and some more variant covers here one by butch guys that one surprises me that they got butch guys to do it i'll be showing the uh spines here in a little bit and here we have Empire, Captain America, and the Avengers. First thing that I notice, well, besides the yellow spine, which matches the Empire spines that I've seen previously, is this Steve McNiven cover. I don't know what it was. I, I didn't see Steve McNiven at all. But then when I looked at it, I saw his signature, and I was like, oh, that's why I like it. I still like it. It just feels a little bit different. I don't know what it is. So this book collects two miniseries. You have the three-issue miniseries of Empire Avengers, written by Jim Sub and artwork by Carlos Magno. And then, this is the surprising one, you have Empire Captain America 1, 2, and 3, uh, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, which isn't the surprising part. The surprising part is this. The artist is Ariel Olivetti, who I'm really familiar with because he has this very unique, like I almost want to call it heavy metal type of art style and it's almost like a mix of cg like almost like graphics from doom if or the unreal engine so to see him draw things like this because i've seen his artwork before in punisher and other marvel books but to see his artwork like this just pencils and having um rochelle rosenberg do the colors 
it's just a different experience. Like I, I was reading this and I didn't even look at the credits. I had no idea who the, uh, who was writing it or who was drawing it, but I would not have guessed it was um, Ariel Olivetti. So the story is pretty much focusing on the Avengers and how they're dealing with the Katati invading Earth, right? They're teaming up with Skrulls and the Kree and they're fighting the plant lives here on Earth. Let me show you some of this artwork by Magna. Uh, look at Man Thing. First of all, damn, that is an awesome picture. You all know I love my boy Dane. But here is what Carlos's artwork looks like. Uh, Carlos Magno. He has a very Gary Frank, Lionel Francis U type of art to him. And here's some more pages. Now let's look in the back here for some extras. So we have a couple of extras here, some variant covers. Of course, I am censoring this final page of the miniseries, not to give anything away. But another surprising thing, that is Steve Epting right there. That does not look like his artwork. And then you have Luke Ross and Butch Guys. Again, Butch Guys had no idea the man was still doing variant covers. That's really cool. Dan Mora and Kim Jacinto. And another variant here by Paco Medina. The book has 136 pages, retails for $17.99. Next up is Cable, part of the Dawn of X series. Now, I've seen some solicits that state that this collects issues 1 through 6, but it doesn't. It's just issues 1 through 4, retailing at $15.99. Now, this one I have to be really careful with because there are some spoilers towards the end of each issue. There's a little mini story that's following the adventures of a character. And I don't want to give away who that is. But this is the story of Cable. Now, if you've read Extermination, and if you've been following the Dawn of X series, you know why he looks the way that he looks, right? So I've talked a little bit about it when I did the Dawn of X. I think it was uh, collected in Volume 9, um, just what his story is about. But it does include some knights from Galador. That's all I will say about that. Introduces us to a couple of new characters that we've seen around Krakoa, but haven't really gotten to know. And then, of course, his team up with the Cuckoo Sisters here. And the artwork is freaking phenomenal by Phil Noto. And Gary Jerry Duggan is the one that's writing it. Now, the last time we saw this young Cable was during the pages of Fallen Angels, which, like I said, for me, wasn't really my thing. So I'm glad that he's back in his own book. And the book has some things that I wanted to see, but one of the most important things that I wanted to see was this young Cable, you know, connect with his father, Cyclops, right? Because, I mean, Cable, that's his dad. He sent him to the future uh, with the Ascany sisters to be cured of this techno-organic virus. So I let him go. Man, that moment still gets me. But um, I think Jerry Duggan does a really good job of touching on those points, too. So for fans of Cable that have been hoping for um, these moments of reconnecting with his father, Cyclops, they're in here. Just read it yourself. It's so good. I really like this series. Uh, Jerry Duggan, man, I'm really digging his uh, writing. I'm a big fan of uh, his Marauders run and, of course, his Deadpool run. There's also, see what I mean? Knights of Galador has something to do with a sword. And all of this, speaking of sword, there leads directly into the X of Swords crossover event. Uh, the book has 128 pages. I think Deadpool guest star, yeah, Deadpool guest stars in this particular issue, sending Cable on a mission. Uh, let's look in the back here for some extras. So this is where they keep not just the variants, but the actual covers back here. So all four issues. And then this is the beginning of the variants. I really like that Scotty Young over the top pouches, 90s Cable. And then they reused this picture right here from Greg Capullo. And, you know, I think that was right before he showed up in issue 25 of X-Force during the um, Fatal Attraction storyline. You have some Marvel Zombie variants. And then, oh, Days of Future Past variants. Let's keep going. And for all you spine watchers out there, here is what all the spines look like. And at this moment, I just want to remind you to smash that like button because it helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps our channel grow. Or pause it. Put me on mute. Do your thing. Can't believe I just told everybody put my ass on mute. Uh, $17.99 is what Wolverine retails for. So let's just jump right in here. I've talked about how Benjamin Piercy has quickly become one of my new favorite writers. 
and this book is no exception. Uh, so with the pages of X-Force, I was sold on his writing as well as his run on Green Arrow during the Rebirth run. So the other big selling point to this is the phenomenal return of Adam Kubert, right? So Adam Kubert joined Wolverine in the pages of issue 75, which is the iconic Fatal Attractions cross. That's the second Fatal Attractions uh, comment I've made today. But... I mean, it was a very iconic moment, right? It was the adamantium. It was the cover. It, and then he became the ongoing artist for a long time with Larry Hammer writing it. And now he's teaming up with Benjamin Piercy to bring a new era of Wolverine to readers. And this is all taking place during the Dawn of X. So during Krakoa, Wolverine has been with X-Force. He's been rolling solo for a while. One of the things I was going to say is that the first story arc here, it's a very sweet story. It's about a father trying to save his daughter. A, they're both humans and... They find some kind of way to bring in the plants from Krakoa. Now, that story, the first issue, was collected, I think, at Dawn of X, Volume 8. So all of this was collected in the Dawn of X trade, right? But there is a Part B, and Part B is collected in the back, Part B to Issue 1. And I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. It's probably going to be collected in another Dawn of X trade paperback because they have to keep those stories um, together. But yes, the first story, I think, is a really sweet story. It's a whole mission of how Wolverine has to take... Now, there's a really cool prop that he takes with him, I think, uh, and a pretty unique way of doing it. The second story arc features the return of Omega Red and vampires. Here, let me show you. But the biggest thing I noticed about the second arc is this artwork here by Viktor Bogdanovic. Now, I'm not familiar with him, but this art style is very similar to that of Greg Capullo's. And I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I love when one artist inspires another artist. I mean, look at all the Jim Lee clones we had in the 90s. And some of them, like Travis Cheris, uh, just went on and did their own thing. They evolved their own artwork. So I don't see anything wrong with that. So, but I find it really cool because not a lot of people have that kind of style. And yes, one can say that Greg Capullo draws like Todd McFarlane, but then Todd McFarlane was a lot like John Byrne. It's just art inspiring art. What's my point? I don't know. Oh yes, vampires. The vampires uh, team up with Omega Red to go after Wolverine. That's what the second story arc is about. But I mainly wanted to focus on this artwork here. All of this again, written by Benjamin Piercy. Let's look in the back for some extras. Here's all the covers. And like I mentioned, 1B will probably be collected with the other vampire stories in another trade paperback of Dawn of X. All of this, again, leading into the X of Swords storyline. That is a freaking awesome cover. And here's all the variants. I wish they were all full size, but I get it. Keeping costs down. Um, that's a cute uh, Scotty Young one. Man, they put all the variants back here. Or maybe Wolverine just had a ton more than everybody else. Now... This book retails for $17.99, and this one has a 184 pages in it. Now, if you saw my video of my most wanted uh, collected editions coming out in November, Last Rites. Hell yes. This is the tail end of Anne Nocenti's run. This finishes out her run, sadly. And we have a new writer on the book, and his name is D.G. Chichester. I think that's how you pronounce it. So the book finishes off. Uh, Mark Bagley does a fill-in issue here. And then we have this guy join, and this is Lee Weeks. Lee Weeks becomes the ongoing artist, and he stays through D.G. Chichester's run up until Scott McDaniel comes over, um, and takes over the book. Uh, so the book collects issues 283 to 300 which is the iconic cover that you see here, The Last Rites Part 4, and Daredevil Annual Number 7. So the first part here, written by Anna Shanti, like I said, wrapping up her run, is pretty much a Matt Murdock that has amnesia. He can't remember who he is. For some reason, he thinks he is Jack Murdock, right? But there's somebody running around committing crime dressed as Daredevil. So it's this big story arc about how... Uh, Matt has to regain his memories because he can't remember who he is and stop this daredevil phony. That's mainly what her last story arc is about. And as you can tell, it's got phenomenal artwork by Lee Weeks. And I remember, yeah, Daredevil was the first time. This is the first time I saw his artwork. It's a very similar style to the Cooper brothers, uh, Ron Garney, um, even uh, Steve Epting a little bit. That's what I see in here. 
So this issue right here, 291, ends her run. So it's Daredevil finding Bullet, the rematch with Bullet. Uh, kind of gets rid of some of her supporting cast to make for a new... This is the annual, by the way, so that's not really spoiling anything. Writer right here. And the first thing DG Chichester does is bring in Taskmaster and the Punisher. And all these other characters from Daredevil's past. So now we have a new writer... And the ongoing artist is Lee Weeks. And all of this, I mean, he had to get ready for a 300th issue. He started with 292. You know, it doesn't give you a lot of time to uh, wrap up a lot of storylines or loose ends and start introducing your own story arc. But he did a phenomenal job. And I'm a big fan of Last Rites. I mean, to me, and this is going to sound blasphemous, but to me, Last Rites is the proper follow-up to Born Again. You know, it's, it's about revenge. It's about... Um, somebody getting their comeuppance and I think he does a phenomenal job of that uh, tying a lot of these things to Born Again as well as um, right here what he does with Typhoid Mary but I will leave you to find that out book retails for $39.99 and oh yeah Nick Fury gets involved yeah the last rights man that was a pretty cool storyline am I alone here it was only four parts but I loved it I can't show the ending but let's see if there's anything extra in the back there's 504 pages, by the way. So we have Marvel Age 106 talking about the 300th anniversary issue. Uh, and Asante wrapping up her run. And then, of course, DG Chichester coming in. And it's got little interviews here by different artists and writers that have worked on Daredevil over the years. And this is a page from the Marvel Swimsuit issue. Huh. Maybe one day we'll get that omnibus. Again, 504 pages, volume 15, years 1990 to 1992. And that, as they say, is that. Now, these books are available from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price, Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap graphicnovels.com your source for the hottest books with deep discounts customer service and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more and that was the contents and the page count of each of these trades let me know which ones you're picking up are you an epic collector are you getting the dawn of x trades or are you getting these single volumes like this all of these lead into the x of swords again this was the uncanny omar please don't forget to hit that like subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live Speaking of live, don't forget to check out Old Reader, New Reader at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Wonder Maddie. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all for watching. More importantly, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.